Hi, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Joyful News. These are stories I've gathered from around the world that spark joy, and I hope you love them as much as I do. The first story is about my business school reunion that I had this last weekend. That reunion filled me with so much love and joy and hope as I attended my 15-year reunion at UVA's Darden School of Business. The people there and my Darden education shaped my life and continue to shape my life in incredible ways. They made me a better human. The relationships in my life have always been my priority, but now after this insane pandemic and beating cancer, that's truer than ever. I'm so glad we got to be together, and I always wish we had more time. Cheers to getting together soon and more often. The next story is about a new kind of event I've never heard of, but I'm hoping to take advantage of pretty soon. We've all heard of a bar crawl, right? But have you ever heard of a book crawl? For Secret NYC, Brianna Perry reported that the bookstores of Brooklyn invited bookworms to participate in a borough-wide Brooklyn bookstore crawl. They spent the week supporting over 20 independent Brooklyn bookstores while enjoying special events and perks along the way. Bookstores included Books Are Magic, The Center for Fiction, Greenlight Bookstore, Pioneer Works, Powerhouse, and many others. And as someone who loves reading and writing books, I hope this type of event becomes much more common. My friend Cheryl told me about this next story. We all know that plastic waste is one of the worst pollutants on the planet, degrading the health of our air, soil, and water. Shermaine Lee wrote a piece for the BBC about a road into New Delhi where countless cars a day speed over tons of plastic bags, bottle tops, and discarded polystyrene cups. In a single kilometer, a driver covers a ton of plastic waste. But far from being an unpleasant journey through a sea of litter, this road is smooth and well-maintained. In fact, the plastic that each driver passes over isn't visible to the naked eye at all. It's simply just a part of the road itself. India has been leading the world in experimenting with plastic tar roads since the early 2000s, but a growing number of countries are beginning to follow suit to save carbon emissions, keep plastic out of the oceans and landfill, and improve the life expectancy of the average road. Adding plastic to roads appears to slow their deterioration and minimize potholes. The plastic content improves the surface's flexibility, and after 10 years, India's earliest plastic roads show no signs of potholes. Incorporating the plastic waste instead of incinerating it also saves three tons of carbon dioxide for every kilometer of road. And there are economic benefits too, with the incorporation of plastic resulting in savings of roughly $670 per kilometer of road. I'm so excited about this new opportunity to put our plastic waste to use. This next story comes from my mom. The first career I wanted was a paleontologist. The second I wanted was an astronaut. So to this day, my mom still sends me every news article she sees about dinosaurs and space. Case in point, last week we had a very exciting cosmic event. Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, Venus, and the moon all lined up in the night sky. And in June, Mercury is going to join the parade, making five visible planets. The planets won't twinkle in the night sky, setting them apart from the surrounding stars. Experts say you won't need a telescope or a set of binoculars to see the alignment. All you need are your eyes and a clear sky. Happy planet gazing. Next up, I've got another New York story. Governor's Island is a 172-acre island in the heart of New York Harbor, and it's only 800 yards from Lower Manhattan. Their website announced their latest public art exhibit that also serves as a monument to environmental preservation. The Open Orchard is an expansive new artwork on Governor's Island by Sam Van Aken, commissioned through the Governor's Island Arts. Taking the form of a public orchard comprised of 102 fruit trees, the open orchard will act as a living archive for antique and heirloom fruit varieties that were grown in and around New York City in the past 400 years but have mostly disappeared due to climate change and the industrialization of agriculture. The fruit varieties presented in the open orchard are indigenous to, originating in, or have been historically grown in New York City. Using a unique grafting process, Van Aken combines multiple fruit varieties into a single tree, so different varieties grow alongside one another. Beyond their aesthetic appeal, these hybrid trees undertake the critical work of preserving rare fruit varieties in a safe environment, providing a roadmap for innovative techniques to maintain vital biodiversity in the face of a changing climate. As part of this monumental project, nearly a hundred additional trees will be donated and planted in community gardens throughout the five boroughs in partnership with New York City Parks Green Thumb the largest community gardening program in the United States. When it opens, the Open Orchard will also include a range of public programs, including workshop series, talks and performances, fruit tastings, harvest events, culinary lessons, and more. You can find out everything at govisland.com. The last joyful news story I wanted to leave you with is a poem that I talked with Ashley Semrick about in the Joy of Old Things episode this week. Mary Oliver, one of our favorite poets, wrote the poem, Don't Hesitate, and it bears repeating again and again. 
So here it goes. Don't hesitate by Mary Oliver. If you suddenly and unexpectedly feel joy, don't hesitate. Give in to it. There are plenty of lives and whole towns destroyed or about to be. We are not wise and not very often kind, and much can never be redeemed. Still, life has some possibility left. Perhaps this is its way of fighting back, that sometimes something happens better than all the riches and power in the world. It could be anything, and very likely you notice it in the instance when love begins. Anyway, that's often the case. Anyway, whatever it is, don't be afraid of its plenty. Joy is not made to be a crumb. Thank you, Mary Oliver, for getting this down in your lifetime so that we can always be reminded to seek out and create joy. We are meant to have joy in abundance. We are meant to dance and sing and laugh and delight in the world, and we all deserve that. All of these stories and links to them can be found on my website at kristaavampato.com slash joyproject. If you've got stories of joy, please send them my way on Twitter at KristaNYC, on Instagram at KristaRoseNYC, and at my website, KristaAvampato.com slash joyproject. I'll be back on Tuesday, May 17th with another edition of Joyful News. Until then, keep the joy going, friends. I'll talk to you soon.